Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. Uh, we should be broadcasting on uh, Facebook Live. It's uh, Wednesday, March uh, 15th, March 14th, 2018. Okay, so um, I was broadcasting on Facebook. We had some technical difficulties, but I was talking about National Walkout Day, National Walkout Day, okay? Enough National School Walkout, the Enough National School Walkout, they use the hashtag National Walkout Day. And this is dealing with what National Walkout Day uh, meant for African Americans, what National Walkout Day means for African Americans. So it's very important uh, for the African American community. Many people don't know this. This is why I'm doing this presentation, because I saw some of the Facebook posts today, some of the social media posts, things like this. And uh, I could tell people haven't researched this, all right? So um, as I stated before, this protest today was the uh, exactly one month anniversary of the massacre at uh, Marjorie, Stoneman, uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were killed. Uh, and it took place today on the East Coast and the West Coast, 10 a.m. on the East Coast, okay? And then it took place uh, 1, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which, which is 10 a.m. on the West Coast. And it was estimated that 185,000 people would be involved in 50 states, okay? Uh, this was designed for uh, uh, youth. It was designed for high school students, uh, specifically high school students, uh, but you had middle school students and elementary school students even participating. And also you had some college students, all right? So this is designed to uh, draw attention to the gun violence across the country and to push for common sense gun laws. When we look at the article from um, NBCnews.com, NBCnews.com, entitled Students Demand Action on Gun Violence with Nationwide Walkout. Students Demand Action on Gun Violence with Nationwide Walkout. Um, it, uh, they say that the organizers of the march said the purpose was to highlight, quote, Congress's, Congress in action against the gun violence plaguing our schools and neighborhoods. Congress in action against the gun violence plaguing our schools and neighborhoods. This is not just about shootings inside of schools. This is about gun violence in the communities as well. OK, so it's very important for people to understand this. All right. Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Uh, invite your friends to tune in. How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm going to post the information here on the thread of the broadcast. OK, all right. Now, the organized now this march was organized by a uh, women's march youth empower women's march youth in power and that is the youth division of the women's march so we know the women's march uh organized uh um over one million uh people especially women uh january 21st 2017 the day after trump's inauguration all right. We know there were at least 500,000 to 1 million people that organized in Washington, D.C. And then we saw the uh, uh, march took place also um, in 2018, uh, January 21st and 22nd, uh, 2018, or the, the 20th of 21st. OK, it was, they had the two days. They had hundreds of thousands of people across the country who came out also. All right. OK, so when you. Um, um, there was an article from news1.com today, right? And I saw a lot of people commenting on social media about this. The information I'm about to share with you, nobody on social media, none of the comments uh, shared this information, all right? So this was organized by Women's March Youth Empower. And the march was scheduled to last for 17 minutes. Now, mo mo now, you saw people protesting much longer than that. They stayed out of school. They were protesting. This got nationwide media coverage. This is why it was important for African-Americans to be there, to push our issues 
and to talk about how gun violence impacts our communities, all right? So it was supposed to last for 17 minutes, one minute for each one of the people killed in the Parkland uh, school massacre, all right? Um, and then you have people talk about, oh, well, where was the march when Tamir Rice was killed? Well, first of all, the women's march didn't even, the women's march did not exist when Tamir Rice was killed, okay? The Women's March was organized after Trump uh, became president, okay? The Women's March did not exist during, during uh, uh, when Tamir Rice was killed. It did not exist when, the, when uh, the officers were acquitted, things like that. Okay, just so you understand. Now, there were protests involving regarding Trump, you have people protesting outside the home of the prosecutor who refused to prosecute the officers. If you actually do a Google search before you start posting these comments, this is why it's important for people to do research because I saw all these type of comments all day long. If you did a simple five minute Google search, you can answer some of these questions yourself. So when you look at the article from, um, um, news1.com, uh, what National Walkout Day means for Black America, what National Walkout Day means for Black America, okay? They break down three things, a crackdown on gun violence, um, an examination of militarized police actions against students, and push for voting rights, okay? But they have a link for the Women's March Youth in Power. All right. And I'm going to post this here on the thread of the broadcast because a lot of the people co commenting and complaining, number one, don't protest anything, aren't involved, are, aren't involved in this fight, number one. Number two, they're not sharing any of this. They're just speaking out of ignorance. So when you click on the link for Women's March Youth and Power, it takes you to their website, Frequently Asked Questions. And it says, hashtag enough national school walkout. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? We are living in an age where young people like us do not feel safe in our schools. This issue is personal for all of us, especially for those of us who are survivors of gun violence, especially those of us who are survivors of gun violence. We are walking out for all people, capital A-L-L. -L. We are walking out for all people who have experienced gun violence including systemic forms of gun violence that disproportionately impact teens in black and brown communities. They're talking about African-Americans and Hispanics. We are walking out for all people who have experienced gun violence, including systemic forms of gun violence that disproportionately impact teens in black and brown communities. It is important that when we refer to gun violence, we do not overlook the impact of police brutality and militarized policing or see police in schools as a solution. Let me repeat this because all these people comment on social media, 99.9% .9 of them did not share this information that I'm sharing with you now. This is one of the problems with social media. OK, it allows anybody to comment and they have no clue what they're talking about. It is important in this section to ask, why are we doing this? Why did this march take place today? It is important that when we refer to gun violence, we do not overlook the impact of police brutality and militarized policing. Or see police in schools as a solution. We also recognize the United States has exported gun violence through imperialist foreign policy to destabilize other nations. We raise our voices for action against all these forms of gun violence. This wasn't just this wasn't just about school shootings in white neighborhoods. That's not accurate. This is why before people start commenting, they need to do some research. There were African-American students out there protesting, trying to save their, their lives. They were absolutely correct to do that. I saw on MSNBC numerous times they were on the ground in Chicago interviewing 
African-American students in Chicago talking about how gun violence impacts their lives, how they're fighting for common sense gun laws. And there was there was national media coverage in Milwaukee. I saw African-American students there being interviewed on MSNBC about gun violence in their community. They're not just dealing with not feeling safe in schools. They're dealing with not feeling safe in their own communities and gun violence in their own communities. Well, the, well, the people who were negatively speaking out against this march, they didn't share any of this information with you that I just shared. They didn't share any of this because they didn't do any research. Once again, I'm going to post this link. Okay. This is from Women's March Youth in Power. They explain why this march took place. Okay. So you can read the rest of it. A lot of it uh, I've already talked about. And they asked the, and they asked the question, is this really led by students? This was a march led by students. Some some in one of the previous broadcasts I did, somebody asked, why should I walk off my job? Why people white people didn't walk off their job uh, when black people were being killed? This 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 is not asking you to walk off your job. What are you talking about? This is for students. Is this really led by students? Yes. The enough national school walkout is an initiative organized by Women's March Youth and Power. We believe as youth, it is imperative. It is imperative. We have spaces where our voices are being heard. We don't need adults speaking on our behalf. Okay, then they next thing they go and break down uh, who a lot of these youth organizers are across the country and they list their ages. So you can check this out also. Now you had parents of those in Parkland, you had some parents who, and you had some teachers and things like this who helped their students like organize, but this is something led by, by the youth. And this, and this, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. So you can check out the rest of this. All right. Uh, cause they, they, they continue now you had some, um, uh, let, let's go to the article here from um, news1.com. What National Walkout Day means for Black America? So they ask the question, um, number one, so they break this down and, and three main things they talk about what it means for Black America. Number one, a crackdown on gun violence. Women's March Youth and Power organizers and advocates explain why they want folks to walk out, including people of color who are most impacted by gun violence. And they cited with that, you know, what I just said, we are walking out for all people who have experienced gun violence, including systemic forms of gun violence that disproportionately impact teens and black and brown communities. Okay. Um, and then they also have a tweet here about approximately how many people will be involved as well. Uh, well, how many schools? About uh, 3,000 or more than 3,000 schools across the country. It was expected that at least 185,000 people would participate today. I haven't seen exact numbers, but it was anticipated at least 185,000 people would participate. Number two, an examination of militarized police actions against students. An examination of militarized police actions against students. With the rise in the number of videotaped incidents of police officers and security guards getting into physical confrontations with students of color, the march seeks to draw attention to the disturbing to, to the to the disturbing trend. Organizers also want to confront police brutality, which disproportionately affects communities of color. This is dealing directly with African Americans, okay? Uh, this is dealing directly with uh, African Americans, all right? So, number, uh, so they go on and continue. It is important that when we refer to gun violence, we do not overlook the impact of police brutality and milita militarized policing or see police in schools as a solution, all right? Number three, pushing a uh, push for vote. Well, well, before I go to number three, so all across the country, they're fighting for common sense gun laws. Now we've seen we've seen progress that we didn't think we were going to see a month ago. 
we've seen progress. We, I mean, tremendous progress. We didn't see. We didn't think we were going to see a month ago. Number one, you have the NRA, National Rifle Association. They have about five million members. This is one of the biggest lobbying organizations in the country. You've had about twenty corporations to sever ties with the NRA, to sever ties with offering uh, discounts to NRA members. Because of pressure being put on these corporations on social media, phone calls they got, emails, all right? Um, NBCnews.com reported February 24th, more companies cut ties with the NRA after customer backlash. More companies cut ties with the NRA after customer backlash. You have First National Bank of Omaha to cut ties. You had Enterprise Rental Car, uh, Hertz Rental Car, uh, a, a number of uh, corporations. ThinkProgress.org has a uh, long list of them. You have Avis and Budget. You have uh, insurance giant MetLife, uh, software company Semantic, um, you have uh, Boston-based home security companies, simply then uh, about 20 companies, corporations that are severed ties with the NRA. Then we see you have um, retailers like uh, Dick Sporting, uh, Dick Sporting Goods and Walmart. New York Times reported February 28, 2018, one of the nation's largest retailers, Dick Sporting, Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, said it was immediately ending sales of all assault style rifles in his stores. This was uh, two months ago. Nobody thought this would happen. Two months ago, six weeks ago, nobody thought something like this would happen. The retailer also said that it would no longer sell high capacity magazines and that it would not sell any gun to anyone under 21 years of age, regardless of local laws. OK. Um, you saw Delta, you saw Delta Airlines cut ties as well. And then the state legislature and the Republican dominated state legislature and Delta Airlines tried to retaliate against uh, Delta. We saw that Walmart uh, announced that uh, they were raising the uh, minimum age you can buy guns from 18 to 21. Um, so we've seen changes there as well. These are things that just happened in the last month, last week in Florida. You saw that because of the protests, because of the galvanizing support, they pushed the state legislature to sign in the law, raising the minimum age you can buy a gun from 18 to 21, banning bump stocks. And they also had some uh, other things in the bill as well. And the Republican governor, Rick Scott, who has an A rating from the NRA signed it into law. There was tremendous pressure on him. One, two, he's run, he is suspected he wants to run for U.S. Senate, or he is running for U.S. Senate, one of them. But they were able to get this done. Six weeks ago in Florida, nobody thought this would be possible. Okay? Now, they didn't get everything they wanted. They're still fighting. But just in the past month, past month, we've seen tremendous uh progress just in the past month okay and this is just the beginning all right so um here all right so you have a crackdown on gun violence you have um uh an examination of militarized police actions okay against students and then you have a push for voting rights this is what's taking place as well there's a huge push for voting rights and to register youth to vote, especially those who are about to turn 18 and be able to vote in midterm elections, all right? Organizers will encourage folks to register to vote by sending a text P2P, the, the letter P2, the, the, the letter P, the number two, the letter P. P2P to RT vote, RT vote, or 788683. They want to make it clear that when elected officials fail, to do their jobs, they fail communities, and these communities can then vote them out of office. They, th this is extremely important because when people are mistreating you, people need to rise up and fire them and vote them out of office. You don't allow them to stay in office and keep mistreating you. 
And you and oftentimes you teach people how to treat you as well. So when people keep mistreating you, when they give away tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires to build stadiums, when when they're shutting off the water of poor people in your communities and you don't rise up and have a massive tidal wave and vote these people out of office, you send a clear message to them that they can just keep mistreating. Regardless of you, you may march. Marching has its purpose, but on election day, you need to fire these people and send a clear message. You're not going to be mistreated. You're not going to take this. But people who have low self-esteem, people who don't think they're worth fighting for, people who have low self-esteem and low racial esteem, that think lowly of themselves and think lowly of their group, uh, lowly of their race, they don't fight back and they allow a minority population to rule over them and keep mistreating them. They want to make it clear that when elected officials fail to do their jobs, they fail communities, and these communities can then vote them out of office. Absolutely. This includes elected officials who do not advocate for African Americans. Absolutely. People need to read this article. I saw a whole lot of people commenting on social media. Nobody cited this article from news1.com. This article was from earlier, uh, from early in the day. Okay. How's everybody doing? Share this information, share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in also. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so we have that. Then you had an article from, uh, so, so we had the article also from AtlantaBlackStar.com, which is a good article, student stage nationwide walk out against gun violence. Okay. And uh, they talked about the protests. They talked about the women's uh, March youth and power. All right. And, um, it, it, and it says the coordinated walkouts were loosely organized by Empower, the youth wing of the women. It brought thousands uh, to Washington, D.C. last year. The group urged students to leave class at 10 a.m. local time for 17 minutes, one minute for the shooting, and suggested demands for lawmakers, including an assault weapons ban and mandatory background checks for all guns. OK, they're pushing for common sense gun laws. Now the term gun control, I don't think the term gun control is the common sense gun laws, okay? Um, on the uh, website for Women's March Youth and Power, it says our elected officials must do more than tweet thoughts and prayers in response to this violence, okay? Uh, and each community was urged to shape its own protests. And while parents and teachers in many districts worked together to organize age appropriate activities, school administrators had mixed reactions. Some have applauded students for taking a stand while others threatened uh, discipline as well. They talk about some of the school districts that threatened discipline, um, like uh, one school district, in one city in New Jersey uh, and Maryland's Hartford County drew criticism this week when they said uh, students could face punishment for leaving class. And let me uh, go to this article here. Here we go, it's right here. Okay, in Pensacola, Florida, Superintendent Malcolm Thomas ordered uh, ordered up an in-school assembly instead. Okay. He warned students that they, could dis that they could discuss voting and mental health issues, but not guns and saying that political banners would not be allowed. Who does he think he is? Uh, Malcolm Thomas told the Pensacola News Journal, uh, you can't make political statements. It can't be a pro-gun or anti-gun assembly. Okay, interesting. I hope they walked out of school. Now, free speech advocates geared up for battles. Uh, the American Civil Liberties Union issued advice for students saying uh, schools can't legally punish them more harshly because of the political nature of their message. In Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Texas, some attorneys said they will provide free legal help to students who are punished. The ACLU of Georgia's uh, guidance letter, the ACLU of Georgia's guidance letters uh, to districts said, Quote, the United States Supreme Court has long held that students do not share their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate, end quote. OK, so. Uh, this nationwide action is one of several protests planned for the coming weeks. Now, March 24th, you have a big nationwide, you have a big um, 
uh, march uh, in Washington, D.C., okay? And um, it, it's a rally for school safety. It's expected to draw hundreds of thousands of people. That's March 24, 2018. Uh, you, and, and you have another round of school walkouts planned for April 20th, uh, which is the 19th anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting, which took place in uh, Colorado, all right? Okay, now, after the walkout took place on Wednesday, March 14th, some students in Massachusetts, Massachusetts said they plan to rally outside the Springfield headquarters of Smith. Some religious leaders are expected to call on the gun maker to help reduce gun violence, all right? So you can read the rest of this article. So this article is from uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com. Students stage nationwide walkout against gun violence. Students stage nationwide walkout against gun violence. That's AtlantaBlackStar.com, all right? Now, there was one school, uh, I saw a story earlier in the day, and there was an update to the story. Uh, um, a school, a high school in Atlanta. And uh, the Hill.com uh, had a story about this, about uh, the students taking a knee. Students in Atlanta take a knee to protest gun violence. Students in Atlanta take a knee to protest gun violence, okay? And it says hundreds of students in Atlanta took a knee on Wednesday in a silent protest to honor the victims of February's Florida high school shooting. Students nationwide took part in a 17-minute national walkout on Wednesday, exactly one month since a gunman killed 17, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, okay? About 600 students at Booker T. Washington High School participated in the student-led demonstration where they kneeled and bowed their heads, quote, as a measure to show respect, end quote, according to district officials. The school was placed on a, quote, unquote, soft lockdown to prevent visitors and others from entering the school during the 17 minute demonstration. Students were instructed to comply with the school's safety plan for the optional protest. District Communications uh, Director Letitia Gray stressed that officials were, quote, absolutely in support of the students, end quote. There were reports earlier in the day, and this is an updated article from thehill.com. There were reports earlier in the day that um, the students took a knee and protested because they were banned from walking out of school. That's not true. There's an update to that article here, okay? Um, so District Communications Director Letitia Gray stressed that officials were absolutely in support of the schools. Earlier tweets, uh, earlier tweets on the incident had mischaracterized the administration's stance on the protest. Those, tweet, those tweets have since been deleted. Letitia Gray said that nearly 16,000 of the district's 52,000 students took part in similar demonstrations throughout the district. NFL players started taking a knee in 2016, seeking to protest police brutality and racial inequality. Uh, Donald Trump harshly criticized players who participated in the protest and repeatedly called for team owners to fire them, okay? Well, he said he, he said they need to fire these SOBs. That's what Trump said when he was uh, um, at a rally for uh, uh, Roy Moore. Okay, at a rally for Roy Moore. I think it was either Roy Moore or Luther Strange. Because first he was for Luther Strange, then he's for Roy Moore. One of those in Alabama, he said they need to fire these SOBs. So students nation. Uh, Students nationwide have been calling on lawmakers to pass stricter gun laws and school safety laws in response to uh, the Florida shooting uh, with many organizing protests and walkouts. Now, uh, uh, editor's note here, it was updated at 2.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, March uh, 14, 2018. Editor, editor's note, an earlier version of this story based on pre preliminary reports incorrectly stated that the Atlanta students have been banned from participating in Wednesday's protest. That's not true. They were not banned from participating in Wednesday's protest. So that has uh, since been corrected. So that was an article uh, from, from uh, the heal.com. And uh, we'll post this link here. So let's continue here. Okay, so um, in the past few years, a lot of, a lot of people, in the past few years, a lot of people have realized that they are invested in gun stocks. 
they invested in gun companies, Smith & Wesson, Ruggers, Ruggers uh, others, okay? And there has been a push to divest from the gun manufacturers when it comes to their 401k plans and pension plans also. All right, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Think Work had a really good article today um, entitled Black Youth Lend a Powerful Voice to the National School Walkout Day Protest. Black Youth Lend a Powerful Voice to National School Walkout Protest. So once again, this protest was not just about shootings inside of schools. It was not just about shootings in white communities. This is about, this is about gun violence across the country. And as stated on the Women's March Youth and Power website, it clearly states, why are we doing this? We are walking out for all people who have experienced gun violence, including systemic forms of gun violence that disproportionately impact teens in black and brown communities, okay? So when we look at this article here from um, thinkprogress.org, and everybody share this broadcast on your own Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in also, okay? Uh, we'll post this link here on the thread here on uh, on the Facebook broadcast. All right, we'll come to that. Okay, so um, the sh uh, the shooting has stirred the shooting at Parkland High School has stirred student activism and reignited the national gun debate, but students of color. Students of color have expressed dismay over their responses. Uh, Parkland, uh, over the responses, Parkland student activists, many of whom are white and come from relatively affluent uh, families, have received. All right. Uh, and, 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 and this is the type of response they received. received uh, and, and many African American students are comparing them with the responses other students, including young Black Lives Matter activists, have encountered while doing the same thing. Now, African-American children face the highest rates of firearm mortality, uh, according to the Center for Disease Control and uh, uh, the CDC Center for Disease Control and uh, Prevention. In the weeks since the Parkland shooting, racial justice activists have pointed to these statistics to justify concerns some have about conservative calls to arm teachers. They argue that to do so would disproportionately endanger students of color. Now, what's interesting, when you hear people argue, Donald Trump hasn't talked about this at all, when you hear a, a, a lot of white people talk about how we need guns, uh, we need teachers to be armed in school, or uh, in the case, the bill that passed in Florida, um, uh, made it legal for non-teachers, uh, other non-schools to be uh, armed, uh, have concealed weapons. And uh, it's on a volunteer basis and it's um, uh, em uh, employees there in the school, but non-teachers, okay? The argument that many in the African-American community are making is that, wait a second, you're going to have African-American children who are disproportionately shot and or killed because they're all because African American children are already disproportionately disciplined, suspended. We know about the school to prison pipeline. We see how African American girls are disproportionately uh, disciplined, suspended, etc. Okay, so you, so they're saying, wait a second, if you, if you are if you have some teachers who are armed, it's going to be African American children who are going to be disproportionately shot and killed. All right. So the disparity was uh, uh, that disparity was on display Wednesday as African American students marched out of classrooms carrying signs and chanting slogans speaking to the different landscape they fa face in and out of school. You had uh, one student's sign that read, "Quote: As a black boy, I hope that one day I have the same rights as a gun." End quote. In Maryland, uh, students from the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women marched in front of City Hall shouting, quote, let me hear it loud and clear, guns are not welcome here, end quote. Let me hear it. guns are not welcome here. Elsewhere in the city, members of the Excel Academy told the Baltimore Sun 
their personal relationships with gun violence made the national walkout more poignant. Quote, uh, uh, Dejana Bass, 18 years old, said, it makes me feel like everybody wants a change, not just those here in Baltimore. It makes me feel like everybody wants a change, not, not just those here in Baltimore. Now, students at CCA Academy uh, in Chicago's North Lawndale community demanded an end to school closings and called for an increase in the investment as they honored friends and family killed by guns. Nearly every member of the school's 180 member student body participated. According to Kaylin Belsha, B-E-L-S-H-A of, uh, of the Chicago Reporter. Now, nearby Kenwood Academy, at nearby Kenwood Academy, uh, students uh, led a chant, say it, uh, say it big, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Say it big, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. At one element, so this article from thinkprogress.org, once again, um, is entitled Black Youth Lend a Powerful Voice to the National School Walkout Day Protest. Black Youth Lend a Powerful Voice to the National School Walkout Day Protest. Very, very uh, uh, good article, okay? And it talks about the protest that African-American youth organized to draw attention to gun violence in their communities as well, which they were supposed to do, okay? Um, so if we continue and look at this article here, um, so you had uh, in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, you had a protest at an elementary school. Um, and it lasted 18 minutes long as opposed to 17 minutes long. One of the organizers, her name was Naomi. She's 11 years old. She's a fifth grader. And she told the Guardian's Lois Beckett, she said that the extra minute memorialized uh, Cortland Arrington, who was a black student uh, at a school in Birmingham, Alabama. OK. And she said that when uh, black women are killed, their names aren't remembered. So I thought it was important to add. OK, so this is a this, this is a bad sister. This sister's 11 years old and she has the presence of mind to understand this. Now, some students marched without much company in Golds, Goldsboro, uh, North Carolina. 16 year old Justin Blackman tweeted that he was the only member of his high school to walk out, a move that later earned him praise from the ACLU, American Civil, Civil Liberties uh, Union, which gave the teenager a shout out on Twitter. All right. Um, Let's see here. So they talk about the Booker T. Washington High School in Atlanta, where they took a knee. Um, and then a number of demonstrators con condemned the sudden attention uh, on gun violence after years of similar problems in, in areas with large communities of color. Um, why does it take 17 to see 343? One sign in Baltimore read, referencing the contrast between the attention paid to the uh, Parkland victims and those killed in Baltimore in 2017. My thing is push, my thing is when you have a movement like this, this is the time to push your agenda. We, we never, we, we really have never seen a mass mobilization like this to push for common sense gun laws and to bring about actual bring about tangible changes because them passing th those laws in uh florida okay which is a very pro-gun state and rick scott the governor of florida has an a rating with the nra people never thought something like that would happen now the demonstrations also highlighted a topic the parkland teenagers themselves have acknowledged on occasions OK, these, dem these demonstrations saying, well, when African-Americans were protesting, we didn't get this type of sense. OK, the demonstrations also highlighted a topic that Parkland teenagers themselves have acknowledged on several occasions. Gun violence has been a reality for a long time for African-American and um, Hispanic communities, but has received minimal attention on a national stage in general. Now, the students themselves are eager to remedy that problem. 
Earlier in March of 2018, Parkland activists met with teenagers from Chicago to discuss the shared trauma of gun violence and its outsized impact on many people of color. Now, Emma Gonzalez, when we've seen Emma Gonzalez a number of times on TV and in, in, in speeches she's given, Emma, Emma Gonzalez, uh, she, she was one of the survivors of, of Parkland. She said, quote, those who face gun violence on a level that we that that we have only just glimpsed from our gated communities have never had their voices heard in their entire lives the way that we have in these few weeks alone. People of color in inner cities and everywhere have been dealing with this for a despicably long time. Now, young people of color are arguably in a position to help their counterparts as they navigate the world of activism and protests, okay? Uh, Philip Agnew, leader of the Florida-based youth-led racial justice group Dream Defenders told City Lab earlier this month that activists of color and gun control advocates have a quote, natural alliance, end quote, that should be explored. Um, he said, uh, activists of color and gun control advocates have a natural alliance that should be explored, okay? Dream Defenders trains young people to organize, he said. We want to show them how to do it bigger and more effectively. We want to show them how to do it bigger and more effectively, all right? Okay, so uh, uh, that was from thinkprogress.org. Really good article about what, what took place today. Black youth lend a powerful voice to the National School uh, Walkout Day protests, all right? Now, um, as I said, many people are invested in gun manufacturers and don't know it. It's through their pension funds, through their pension funds, and it's through their 401k plans, all right? Uh, if you look at two articles, look at the article from New York Times, February 26, 2018, you might be giving gun companies money even if you don't own a gun. You might be giving gun companies money even if you don't own a gun. And they talk about uh, pension funds, index funds, and stock pickers, but also it's through your 401k plans as well. Uh, a number of funds own shares in the gun makers. For example, pension funds for, uh, for example, pension funds for public employees in Florida, Texas, Wisconsin, and Ohio all have stakes of less than one percent in America Outdoor Brands, formerly known as Smith and Wesson. American Outdoor Brands, formerly known as Smith and Wesson, which is the manufacturer of the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle that has been used in a number of recent mass shootings. TIAA which oversees retirement investments for educators and teachers, has uh, small stakes in American outdoor brands and two other publicly traded gun companies. The pension fund for teachers in New York State also has very small positions in the gun companies, Sturm Rucker and Vista Outdoor. The investments represent slivers of the pension funds overall assets, but they nonetheless are generating debate. New Jersey lawmakers last week moved to cut off investments in gun makers, but the state, uh, uh, by the state pension plan, okay? All right, so we got this article here from, uh, so you can read the rest of it. You might be giving gun companies money. February 26, 2018, they go on to talk about index funds and stock pickers also, all right? Uh, want to remind you all, coming up March 24th, I'm doing an online uh, uh, lecture dealing with the film Black Panther. It's an analysis of the film Black Panther. Uh, we have the information here on the um, thread of the broadcast and in the description. You can also go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, Africa.com for more information. And to uh, and to register for that, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, uh, this uh, it, it's two p.m. to four p.m. Saturday, March twenty fourth. It's going to be ten dollars. You can register. You can watch from around the world. You can also register for the six uh, course online bundle pack as well that we have six of my courses 
uh, six of my online courses for one low price. And it will uh, also register you for the, uh, it'll also register you for the Black Panther uh, online lecture as well, okay? All right, and we'll post that here. Uh, we'll post that here on the thread as well. Okay, you have this other article from um, cbsnews.com, cbsnews.com entitled, uh, Are You Invested in Guns? In guns they have some more information there as well, CBS News. Now, a lot of people are also invested in uh, not just gun manufacturers, but privatized prisons. A lot of people are invested in privatized prisons through their 401k plans, their stock plans also, and don't know it. So in, in New York City, you had, uh, uh, in New York City, you had the city employees who found out that their pension funds were invested in privatized prisons and that they divested $48 million in their pension funds uh, from uh, privatized prisons, okay? And they, they were invested in three privatized prisons. Uh, New York Daily News has an article about this. NYC pension fund, NYC pension fund to back out of investments uh, in private prisons. NYC pension funds uh, to back out of investments in private prisons, all right? That's from January 8th, 2017. They actually did back out of them. Uh, so you can um, uh, check out that article as well. So people are finding this out and they're redistributing the pain, okay? And they're withdrawing from gun manufacturers and they're withdrawing from uh, 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 privatized prison companies as well. Uh, New York City's pension system has become the first in the nation to fully divest from private prisons. Controller uh, Scott Stringer um, uh, will announce on Thursday, but they already announced they already did this. I saw Reverend Al Sharpton interviewed um, somebody about this on uh, Politics Nation MSNBC. The city has sold off about forty eight million dollars in stocks and bonds from three private prison companies, according to the controller's office, after a unanimous vote. Uh, from the fund's trustees. The move comes after a scathing federal audit of private prison facilities last year and after eight immigrant detainees have died in the last fiscal year while private immigration detention centers, okay? So they were invested in uh, Core Civic, which used to be Corrections Corporation, used to be Corrections Corporation of America, the largest owner operated privatized prison, invested in, G they invested in GEO Group and G4S as well. OK. All right. So check that out also. All right. So, I mean, the, the movement that's taking place right now is phenomenal. And uh, a lot of progress has been made in just one month. Uh, a lot of people never thought they would see this type of progress, especially this fast uh, when it comes to getting common sense gun reform. But midterm elections are coming up November 6, 2018. And it's extremely important. For us to show up for midterm elections and vote these people out of office, especially these Republicans. They need to be voted out of office because these are people who are blocking a lot of things. We've seen over 100 policies that President Obama had in place. We've seen over 100 policies that Trump has reversed. Trump has redeclared the war on drugs. He did this with Jefferson Borgar Sessions III, his attorney general, May 12, 2017. We also see that Trump reversed uh, not just President Obama's uh, ending the contracts of privatized prisons for federal prisoners. Uh, Trump is, is using privatized prisons again. President Obama said they were ending those contracts. Um, but also, a lot of people don't know the US prison population dropped to its lowest point in 20 years. In December, 2015, it dropped uh, by 800,000. It dropped to 1.53 million but it's going back up under Trump, okay? Um, let's see here. There was an article I was looking for. Uh, it's not privatized prisons. It's, um, let me see here. Okay, Devin is uh, really, let's say, 
Okay. All right, guys. How's everybody doing? Post your comments if you have any questions. Share this broadcast on your own Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also, okay? Um, so we have people fighting back uh, through withdrawing their pension funds, looking to see where the stocks are invested. We have people fighting back, fighting for common sense gun laws. We have people uh, uh, fighting in the inner cities, dealing with the gun violence in the inner cities as well, okay? So people are fighting on uh, different levels. All right. I was trying to see what was the other thing I was trying to uh, think of to pull up here. Be sure to register for the um, online lecture I'm doing March 24th and with the film Black Panther at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Also, you can uh, register for the other uh, online courses I teach, especially Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school, okay? Uh, now, Trump has also, I know what it was I was trying to pull up. Uh, Trump has also reversed President uh, President Obama's uh, policy on surplus military gear for police. Now, this policy came straight out of the protests in Ferguson, Missouri, behind the killing of Michael Brown. Okay, because we saw military grade weapons uh, being pulled on the protesters. We saw tanks, things like this. Right. So. NBCnews.com has this article from August 28, 2017. Trump reverses Obama policy on surplus military gear for police. Reversing an Obama era policy, Donald Trump removed restrictions on the kinds of surplus military gear the Defense Department can turn over to local police departments. The issue has been a sensitive one since the Justice Department concluded that tactics used by, by police during 2014's uh, violent street protests in Ferguson, Missouri, inflamed tensions and created fear among demonstrators. Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced the change uh, in a speech by, to the Fraternal Order of Police in Nashville. The executive order, quote, will ensure that you can get the life-saving gear that you need to do your job and send a strong message that we will not allow criminal activity, violence, and lawlessness to become the new normal, end quote. So, so what people have to understand, this is what I warn people about, about Trump. Trump ran on a platform of law and order. Trump ran on a platform of law and order, which means to protect white people and lock up African Americans. Trump, I actually heard Trump during a campaign, he said that police needed more authority. OK, they didn't need less authority. They needed more authority, more authority. Um, he has they had no criminal justice reform program. Therefore, giving police more military equipment. So, OK, as well. This is problematic. Elections have consequences. People didn't understand what was going on. Elections have consequences. Now. You have. Uh, a study that just came out from Scientific American, right? And NewsOne.com has an article about this from uh, today, March uh, 14, 2018. New study claims white men buy tons of guns because they are afraid of black people. This is from Scientific, this is a, a study from Scientific American. New study claims white men buy tons of guns because they are afraid of black people. Another reason why teachers should not be armed. Another reason why teachers should not be armed. As thousands of young people across the country march against gun violence, a new study has shed light on America's obsession with guns, specifically white men's obsession with guns. According to Scientific American, relatively 3% of Americans own half of the country's firearms. So there are approximately 300 million firearms in, in the US with a population of 326 million. Relatively 3% of Americans own half of the country's firearms. Who fits the profile? 
white men without a lot of education who are afraid of African Americans. This on March 18 claims, quote, these are men who are anxious about their ability to protect their families, insecure about their place in the job market, and beset by racial fears. They tend to be less educated. For the most part, they don't appear to be religious. And suggest one study, faith seems to reduce their attachment to guns. Faith seems to reduce their attachment to guns. In fact, stockpiling guns seems to be a symptom of a much deeper crisis in meaning and purpose in their lives, end quote. Now, President Obama also made these men shed white tears, uh, which meant they needed more firearms. President Obama also made these men shed white tears, which meant they needed more firearms. Quote, a lot of people talked about how important Obama was to, uh, a lot of people talked about how important Obama was to get a concealed carry license. Quote, he's for free health care, he's for welfare, end quote. They were asking, whatever happened to hard work? Obama's presidency, they feared, would empower minorities to threaten their property and families. This is stated in the civic American. In addition, quote, gun owners have become 50% more likely to vote Republican since 1972, and that gun culture have become strongly associated with explicit racism, end quote. Now, these are the people, these, this is Donald Trump's core voting base. This is Donald Trump's core voting base. The study claimed the people who were, quote, most emotionally and morally attached to their guns, end quote, were 65% male, and 78% white. The study claimed that people who were most emotionally and morally attached to their guns are 65% male and 75% white. So the article from news1.com goes on to ask, can we stop saying people love their firearms because of hunting and admit that it's rooted in white male patriarchy and imaginary fears of African-Americans. This could explain why when African-American men have a license to carry a weapon, they are still killed, like Philando Castile. And the NRA doesn't say a word. It took the NRA a long time to say anything about Philando Castile. And Philando Castile had a concealed weapons permit. Hopefully, the young people who are marching today will make a necessary positive change in our country's obsession with guns. Okay? So this is deep. You got to read this article from news1.com, then read this study from Scientific American. I'll probably do another broadcast about this. We may talk about it this Sunday um, on my um, my weekly radio show, the African History Network show on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation here in Detroit. You may have time to talk about that. Hey, those in Baltimore, I am coming to Baltimore. Uh, I'll be in Baltimore uh, April, I think it's April 7th and 8th or 8th and 9th. Is that is that Saturday and Sunday. I'll be at the uh, uh, Baltimore Natural Hair Care Expo. Um, I'll have a booth there once again. I'll be doing a workshop. It's Saturday, April 7th. Sunday, April 8th at the UMBC Event Center in Baltimore. UMBC Event Center, 1000 Hilltop Circle, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, this is the 17th annual Baltimore Natural Hair Care Expo. And I'll have a vendor booth there. I'm doing a workshop on Saturday. I don't know what time. I'm doing a workshop on Saturday. Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. Okay. Special guest is Jennifer Lewis, 
who is on the TV show Blackish. We've seen Jennifer Lewis in everything from A Different World, where she was Dean Davenport, to playing uh, Tina Turner's mother and What's Love Got to Do With It, to being um, Vivian's uh, sister, one of Vivian's sisters on The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Okay, so Jennifer Lewis is uh, uh, one of the special guests. Uh, at the 17th annual Baltimore Natural Hair Care Expo. For more information, visit naturalhaircareexpo.com, naturalhaircareexpo.com, uh, okay? And uh, I will be there both days. I have a vendor booth. We'll have with the DVDs there. You can come see me. And I'm doing a presentation. I'm doing a workshop um, on Saturday. I don't know if I'll do it on Sunday also. I have to find out, but I know I'm doing a workshop uh, Saturday. So admission to the uh, general event, admission to the general event is uh, $20. Tickets are $20. Um, admission to my workshop is free. Okay. Uh, come on out. We'll post this information here. Visit naturalhaircareexpo.com uh, for more information. Naturalhaircareexpo.com also for more information. All right. Hey, you know, you can listen to uh, audio podcasts of our shows and these broadcasts I do on Facebook. We put them in audio podcast format also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, you can go there. All my DVD lectures are there. You can read my articles also. And um, sign, up, sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T, to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them here. Uh, I'll take some of your questions or comments before we get out of here. And um, okay, go ahead and post your questions or comments. And uh, remember, we have a uh, six course, uh, a, a six online course bundle pack. Uh, you, uh, you get six of my online courses. Most of these are on demand. Watch at your own pace. Uh, for eighty dollars, regularly one hundred twenty dollars. Watch it online. Watch from around the world. Uh, that includes ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Maafa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school. Uh, it automatically registers you for the online course I'm doing Saturday, March twenty fourth, uh, about the film Black Panther. Uh, registers you for Great African Women in History: The Mothers of Civilization, and some other ones that are on demand, like African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump, Voter Suppression, Reparations, and High Elections Have Consequences. We just posted the link for that uh, for that six course bundle pack. You can also go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, uh, and the information is there as well. Okay, all right. So, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing today? All right. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, post them. So we're about to get out of here. And um, Remember all these uh, these broadcasts I do. We also have them. We have them here on Facebook. Uh, we have an audio podcast form as well. Uh, a lot of people want to listen at work. We have an audio podcast form at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Right on my homepage. Just click on uh, listen to podcasts uh, from Michael and Hotel. All right. Okay. Hey, we have to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating and pine and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Remember, right now it's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.